he's just talking about, it, it was just that seismic shift in science where we were starting to understand that the most fundamental level of reality, that, uh, that it is probabilistic rather than deterministic, right? Or at least that's how it looks. And that's how it looks. We'll come back to that. But yeah, okay. um, yeah. so that's, that's what Einstein was complaining about. And so I think because that quote is so quotable and so famous, people think, oh, okay, this was mm -hmm. Einstein's basic problem. Mm -hmm. His problem was that there was this sort of fundamental randomness that seemed to be showing up in quantum physics, the physics of really small fundamental stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and let, let's just, let's broaden that one iota. So yeah, sure. what was random? Um, I mean, you know, basically the theory, which works really well, quantum physics, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't let us make absolute predictions about what's going to happen. It lets us make extremely accurate predictions about the probabilities of right. what's going to happen, like in the outcomes of our experiments or in the natural world around us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was, you know, alarming to a lot of people, including Einstein. But that was not Einstein's main problem mm -hmm. with the theory. I think it, like people think it is because of that quote. And when I say people, I mean, I even mean like a lot of physicists seem to even, think that that's yeah. the problem. But it's very clear if you read more of Einstein's writing than just that one quote, it's very clear that while that did bother him, mm -hmm. that was not his main problem. He had two main problems. The two main problems were he thought that quantum physics lacked a concept of reality that 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 you know there should be this idea that the world is around when we're not looking at it and yes we can influence the world around us but you know the the world around us does not depend on us for its existence right and einstein felt that there was a lot uh of of what the other founders of quantum physics were saying because you know it was a team effort there were a lot of physicists involved yeah. Um, he felt that a lot of them were saying things that basically amounted to saying reality is not there when you're not looking. Right. Fast forward a few decades and you've got quantum mysticism. <laughs> right. And, uh, exactly. We create yes. our own reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So literally. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there's there's this famous incident where Einstein's walking down the road with a pupil of Bohr, mm -hmm. um, a guy named Abraham Pace, who uh, ended up uh, becoming a science writer later in life, actually wrote mm -hmm. biographies of both Einstein and Bohr. Um, and they were walking down the street in Princeton sometime in the early 1950s and talking about quantum physics. And then Einstein turns to Pace and says, I, do you really think the moon's not there when you're not looking? Like, you really think the moon's just, you know, in some indeterminate state when you're not right. looking at it? And, and, I mean, this was Einstein's real problem. Like, is the moon there when nobody right. looks? And he thought the answer to that was an emphatic yes, I do too. Um, Me as well. I'm yeah. a reductionist. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, these it, it's not that we have no effect on the world around us. It's just that, you know, the effect is not so large as to make the moon not exist right. when we're not looking. But, but did Bohr's quantum physics propose something so radical or or because I, I like to I like to like if I just think of the probabilistic universe I, and I just limit it to subatomic particles then it's like a little easier to swallow and then it sort of blends into determinism as you get to mm. even just a small molecule or larger right you know what I mean like like for example so it, I, I'm very I, you know I, this is a little uh, I just want to hear about this but I think my listeners do too like to get even more specific like can you describe a quantum system like an electron or something and tell me what Bohr said this is what's going on and what Einstein would say no I don't like that you know what I mean what, just to get very specific yeah, about it absolutely. so I can understand yeah so I can do a little bit of that but, okay. but first I got to put a disclaimer on it nobody really knows what Bohr said Oh. <laughs> Bohr was a famously terrible writer and speaker. There are a lot of people who claim that they understand what Bohr was saying. Mm -hmm. They don't agree with each other. Wow. Yeah. So, like, I, I think that there are as many readings of Bohr as there are people reading Bohr. What a cryptic figure. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was a very weird dude and, and not a very good writer. And so I don't claim to know what Bohr's actual position was. I do... However, I think I have a good handle mm -hmm. on what people thought, what most people thought mm -hmm. Bohr was saying. Well, we can speculate here. That's no problem. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So um, that being said, uh, I think that the classic example is Schrodinger's cat, right? Okay. And I mean, just because it's a classic doesn't mean that we shouldn't talk about it. I think, I think it's a classic for a reason. It's a for pretty sure. good example. Right. right. So you've got, you've got this setup with a slightly radioactive lump of metal and a radiation detector, a Geiger counter, that's going to go off if it detects any radiation coming from the metal. 
And then if the Geiger counter goes off, it will trip a hammer that will fall and smash a vial of cyanide. And along with all of this stuff that's in a box, there's also a cat. So basically, if the lump of radioactive metal gives off radiation, then the radiation detector will go off, hammer will fall, smash the vial, kill the cat. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you put all that stuff in the box and you close the box and then you wait for say half an hour. And at that point, quantum physics is gonna say, okay, there's a 50-50 shot that when you open the box, you will find a living cat. Right. Essentially tethering the abstract nature of a quantum event to right. a macroscopic, physical, tangible, right. the cat needs to be one of these two things. Exactly, right. Because, right. you know, radiation is basically slow motion disintegration.